Have you ever thought about how AI is actually affecting your online shopping? We might be really conscientious about fake news. We've been hearing about fake news for nearly a decade, right? But I think a lot of people uh, don't realize the way that AI technology is beginning to um, actually affect their day-to-day -day lives. Hi, I'm Kalina, and I am an investigator and trainer at Bellingcat. With the rise of AI uh, image generation, AI video, it gives a lot of opportunity for mis disinformation actors to produce content at a greater scale than, than we've seen in the past. I actually spend most of my time thinking about um, some really extreme cases of AI misuse that we actually see real harms of today. People, I think, don't have the skills yet to instinctively look at an image and uh, particularly when they're shopping in a very sort of casual environment and think like, can I trust this image? Is this real? Is this not? My father is an absolute character. <laughs> He's 81, which he doesn't like to admit. He had recently gotten some test results back on a blood work and he was worried about, you know, his kidney health. So when he got these test results, he's like, all right, I want to make sure I'm doing the best I can to stay healthy. Um, let me look up some recipes. Probably like most people, he went on Amazon and bought a cookbook. And he started telling me some things that sounded like really far out. The moment, the moment I looked at this book and opened it up, I knew immediately something was off. And I said, Dad, I think this is an AI generated book. What I ended up doing was taking a bit of the text, ran it through a um, AI detection service, and every bit of text I put in said 100% AI generated. The author of the book just simply did not exist. The only evidence of that name was from the Amazon listing. He had bought this book to get healthier, and he completely changed his diet trying to figure follow what this book was doing. And potentially, it could have been a lot more serious than it was. Thank goodness, you know, he'd only been following it for about a month. But it just showed the real risk, a real risk that I think he had definitely not considered, which was buying a, a fake book created by AI on Amazon. People are not disclosing the fact that these uh, books are being created with AI technology with no fact-checking component. Anyone can create a book, sell however many copies, and then shut it down and then go on to the next thing. There was a Supreme Court justice that said in this ruling about like pornography and obscenity, it's like, I'll know it when I see it. And I kind of feel like there's sometimes like that with AI technology. When I see an AI image, I know it when I see it. You yourself can do this. You look at a bunch of different things that we know to be AI generated, and you almost start beginning to develop a sense for what this looks like. You become a sort of an internal expert. Even if they get have a really good image, you're like, oh, this is very convincing. You also want to look at things that you're not supposed to focus at. And this is particularly true when we look at uh, AI imagery of people. AI image generation services are really good at creating faces, but bad at other things. There's this particularly interesting image here that's uh, created from Mid Journey that like on sort of like first glance, just looking at it, it looks fine. Like, oh, it looks like two women at a party taking a photo, taking a selfie. But as you like begin to look at it longer, you really look at those details. Um, the very first thing you gotta do is look at hands. <laughs> People don't have that many fingers. <laughs> so to me, that's already a big indicator. This is probably AI generated. But even say you didn't even look at the hands. There are lots of other things. Like these teeth don't make sense. We look at this woman here smiling. Uh, she's got way too many teeth. You look at her clothing. It is like blending partially into her collarbone here. It's in fact that it's actually missing a piece of what the fabric should be. So in a sense, this top couldn't exist in reality. It's AI confirmed. <laughs> I really wish that this mug was real because I would own it if it was, uh, but unfortunately it's not. There's a couple things when I look at this image that makes it seem like, oh, you know, it might just be a regular mug, the background, the background's a little blurry. Sure, it's in a, in a portrait mode. Uh, but then I start thinking about like, huh, how would this mug actually work? I look at sort of this sheen on this image here. Like it's got like a little blurry in some areas, a little clear in some areas. There's also, if I zoom in here, on the bottom left-hand corner, we can see that there is like some inconsistencies with the lines. So even if this was like a real geode item, or maybe it was even a print and a replication in some capacity, we can see there is inconsistencies in which the lines follow. In real geodes, they uh, have some consistency. These lines do not connect. They are completely disconnected. And that is a telltale sign of something that may, may be AI generated. I saw so many photos posted online of people saying, oh my gosh, I received the mug. It looks absolutely nothing like the photo. It's like made out of plastic. It's not crystal. And it looks nothing like the photos. <laughs>
This is AI. This mug could not exist. So I don't know what your Facebook profile looks like or your Facebook feed looks like, but when I go on mine, I sometimes get these really beautiful images of like, look at this vacation spot, look at this hotel room, look at this dream home. And uh, what I've noticed is this massive flooding of AI generated images, even in a space like that. And there is money even within clicks and views and things like that. So there is a market for having this kind of like AI uh, generated images of like beautiful spaces, even if they're not trying to immediately sell you anything. I look, use the same techniques for um, identifying AI imagery uh, when it comes to conflict, when it comes to politics, and also for kitchens. <laughs> so when I see this image here, what is going on with this railing? It looks like there should be railings on both sides and we, already, we don't see that sort of railing. So we start looking at those details. Look at the chair next to this pool. Is this a chair? What is this object that's happening here that's kind of weird and funky? Again, not a real thing. We look at the um, other furniture in the background right underneath the stairs. We are missing legs. We're missing what this object would look like in, in reality. Light fixtures on the ceilings, those also look inconsistent. Uh, so I think there are just already sort of these red flags that come out. Not real. It's AI. Confirmed. <laughs> So I think there are a lot of limitations in this because we can't just trust one tool. I think we have to think about what is the goal of this image? What is it trying to convince you of? Is it trying to convince you to purchase an item? Is it trying to convince you to get clicks and likes and shares? I do think a little bit of healthy skepticism is needed when it comes to even our daily lives like shopping. You know, Amazon probably doesn't want to be known as a platform that has AI scam books and Etsy doesn't want to be known as a platform that's got AI scam products. So it's really important for these companies, I think, to take like a strong stand to make sure that their brand is trustworthy and that you yourself as, as a purchaser, trust when you go on that place to, you can purchase something without being scammed. I think we're in a new environment that a lot of things have changed in the past few years when it comes to AI technology, regardless of your age, regardless of your education, your social economic status and where you live, everyone can be susceptible to that kind of scam. And so I think we just need to, to get better protections around it.